Washington Commanders took a loss. That's not a stunner. It was to the Baltimore Ravens. But I think everybody left feeling all right. Adam, did this change how you fundamentally feel about the Washington Commanders? No, if anything, I feel better. Yeah. Look, the defense, is it has issues. We knew that all season long. It's not like anybody coming into this season was a big fan of BSJ, Benjamin St. Juice. But Jaden Daniels is why I feel better. Another Tough environment on the road in Baltimore. Puts up 23 points. Really, the reason I have confidence is they moved the ball, right? They had the two drives where they kind of went three and out and punted. But besides that, they were able to move the ball over and over again into Baltimore territory in the red zone. He was successful finding Terry twice. And that fourth down play, when you watch that again on tape, the way he kind of pumped it and then squeezed it in there, he looked like a veteran. If they want to give him Rookie of the Week again this week, I got no objections. I thought he was really good in a tough environment against a tough team that threw everything. They're not going to because they give it to him every week, so they're going to mix it up this week, I'm sure. But, yeah, I, I'm with you. Jaden Daniels didn't didn't dissuade me at all. Uh, with St. Juice, I think if he's a number two corner, he'll be fine. I don't think he's like, get him out of the league bum. I just think he's being asked to be an elite lockdown guy, and he just fundamentally isn't. My problem is is that he didn't work against Zay Flowers. It also didn't work against Rashad Bateman. Right? So you couldn't even put him at wide or cornerback two over the weekend. And I don't think Zay Flowers is elite. I think he's very fast, but I, I don't think it's you know that hard to stop him. I mean, you look at uh, this year. He's gone over 100 yards, I think, twice. He also has been held to like 10 yards and, and 20 yards. So it really, I think it shows you that uh, Benjamin Seju struggles against speed. Right, Jamar Chase did the same thing. He's got this bigger body, so you'd think he'd do good against taller receivers, but then it gets too grabby against like A.J. Brown and those kind of receivers. So I just don't know that there's a spot for him on a team that's very good. All right, we're a team that's growing right now, and uh, I also don't want them to make any rash changes and nope. go out, try to trade for someone or sign somebody and disrupt the locker room. But that's a big weakness at cornerback. Yeah, and defensive line now weakness as well with these injuries. What's your confidence level in the defense going into what should be a winnable game here against Carolina? Yeah, look, Carolina has moved the ball a little bit better uh, from Bryce Young to Andy Dalton. Yep. Yards per throw is up. They're even running the ball better. I think because of his execution on third down, they're staying on the field, getting more first and 10 running opportunities there for Chuba Hubbard. But look, this is not a team that's going to score 30 points, right? I do think this is a good battle for the defense here to bounce back from the mistakes they had in the Baltimore Ravens game. And really... I actually thought the defense was solid in the Ravens game. I mean, you talk about how they held Henry from the most of the game to under 100 yards, right? He had the long 27-yard run at the last drive that put him to 132. And I thought they did do a good job of limiting Lamar Jackson from taking over the game. He had a few big runs on third down, right? But that was a quarterback-designed run. It's not like he was scrambling around and making explosive plays all the time. Agreed. And, and there, there are things to build off of here. I, I think as you go into this week's game, though, you've got a weird turning the page here where for the first time in the Dan Quinn era, for the first time in the Jaden Daniels era, we expect them to win and I don't think that's unfair to expect them to win. It's a little different situation than they've played from before. Yeah, I think it's similar to the Cleveland Browns game, right, where you're one of the hottest teams in the league, you're coming home, you're picked to win this game, uh, and, and they did, right, and they played well, but now they're without B-Rob probably, and so I do think that's, it's going to be up to Cliff Kingsbury here to establish the rushing attack, because that's Carolina's biggest weakness right now is they're letting O-lines push them around and establish the ground and pound early in games and then play action off of that. So whether it's Eckler, McNichols, or if B-Rob comes back hobbled up, I think they've got to try to run the ball over and over again, go back to it then in the second half as well. Did you get enough running for your tastes on Sunday, or did you feel like they could have done more with, with Eckler? I think you could have done more, yeah. but also – you didn't have as many opportunities because you just didn't have as many possessions as you really wanted. And so I think Cliff kind of, look, you got to give him credit for the creativity, right? The flea flicker screen pass there. Uh, what's better than running the ball? A flea flicker screen, right? <laughs> I'm going to take that. I thought the creativity was there and made up for the lack of the running game. But, you know, Baltimore's strength was stopping the run. So I never a problem with him going away from it. This is Carolina's weakness. You have to stay with the rushing attack. It's, it's trade deadline coming up here in the NFL. If you're the commanders, what do you do? I, I don't think you do anything. Stay put. I, I think you stay put. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens if something falls in your lap. Mitch Tischler made a great point yesterday on my show. Hey, get two wins in a row. Then you're 6-2. and two, And then maybe you decide if we want to be buyers at the trade deadline. But I just think that this is a two-and-a-half-year process. Yes, it's going really well right now. 
But it went really well. Ron Rivera's first year, and he peaked. I don't want that to happen again with Dan Quinn here. I, I do like the fact that I feel like guys are buying in. Guys are having a great time. I think this is what, it, what you're looking at with the 2024 Commanders. Everyone's excited to be in the building, to play for this coach, to play for this quarterback, and that's why they're playing well. Keep the excitement and don't let anything mess with the locker room. Yeah, my thing on the trade deadline is, you, know, you traditionally at the trade deadline, if you acquire, you acquire – a year or a two-year contract you look at the long-term plan here Jaden Daniels will be on his rookie contract in th- the third year the 2026 season that's the one to circle because after that season they got to back up the Brinks truck they got to pay the kid they got to give him all the money that third year though you have an affordable quarterback he's third year in the league he should be really good by then that's the year you want your roster Maximize. That's when you push all your chips in. I don't know that you're going to get anybody at the trade deadline who fits that criteria. I think it's more short-term rentals. And look, we both said at the start of the year, the goal for this year is to find out if you have a few future franchise quarterback in Jade Daniels. Now, all of a sudden, the NFC East is up for the grabs yes. like it was four years ago, and you should try to take it. All right? I mean, absolutely. Uh, go try to win this division here. But I think you can win the division with the, the roster right now. I don't think you need to make a trade to be a playoff team. I don't think they're as good on paper as either the Cowboys or the Eagles, but both of those teams have just decided to fully melt down. And Coaching. I'm going to let them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think coaching has a lot to do with it. Like I said, the guys are fired up to play for Dan Quinn. He's inspiring that locker room. And I think you're right. On ta- on paper, the talent's not as good, but they're playing better yeah. because they're playing inspired football. Yeah, that's football. It's, it's not it's not always the individual parts, but it, you know the the good coaching can make it the you know more than the sum of its parts. Whatever that saying. Not yes. the Jimmys and Joes, but the X's. And there O's. it is. <laughs> there it is. Absolutely, Awad. Um, it, one one more. The Bears game has been moved to four twenty five. How fun is it to have a team? and a kid in Jane Daniels where everybody's clamoring to watch him now. Everybody wants to be part of this. Yeah, no, I mean, it just feels like every single week the Commanders are the must-watch game no matter who we're playing against because we have the C.J. Stroud of last year, right? We have the rookie Lamar Jackson. We have the Patrick Mahomes of the NFC right now where everybody wants to see what Jaden's going to do. I've been getting phone calls from people that are not Commanders fans but tell me, I'm rooting for what you guys are have got going on right now. People love fun quarterbacks play styles all that it's uh it's fun to talk about every and week. especially if he stays being a fantasy monster i think <laughs> that's the biggest part about this is that people are winning fantasy leagues because of him and they're falling in love i love it awad's live every day noon to three you're listening to 910 the fan that 105.1 fm <laughs>